Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So, I am making a loose incense for consecration. So, I am going to be consecrating a new table that I just created where I plan on doing, you know, a lot of my magical workings. Um, and I'm going to consecrate the new herbal grimoire that I created. So, I decided let's do a little bit of research and let's make a really good blend. So, here you see, and I like loose incense. I like burning the charcoal and then putting the incense on there. So, I have already chopped these up really, really finely. In my first, I started with, boop, 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 you know, my mortar and pestle. And then I switched to my trusty um, grinder, herb grinder. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It was under $20 on Amazon. And where has it been all my life kind of thing? So, because, I mean, it gets stuff just like so perfect. So, I want to tell you a little bit about what I am putting in this particular blend um, and just go from there show you my process a little bit you're clearly not going to see everything but I do put intention into every single one of them um, as I'm working with them so here we have cinnamon here we have orange peel Arabic gum uh, myrrh um, frankincense, rose, rose petals, and uh, blessed thistle is going to be going in there as well. So I'm just going to start putting them in here so that you guys can see. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. The whole orange. Yeah. I don't, even the way I cook, I don't measure parts out. I just do what feels right. That's the myrrh. Oh, come on. And there's the frankincense. Now I am going to use my hands and get that really in there, but Oh my goodness, yes, look at that. That's beautiful. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I chose the ones that I did. I'm actually going to read them right out of the book for you. Oh, my hands smell really good. All right, so I am getting a lot of my information right out of Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. And whenever you're making any kind of incense or anything, please make sure that it is safe to burn or it is safe to put on your skin, depending on what kind of um, stuff you're making, okay? So... Every ingredient that I have put in is safe to burn as an incense. So let's talk about the cinnamon first. Folk names are sweetwood and kylon cinnamon. Gender is masculine, planet is sun, element is fire, deities are Venus and Aphrodite. Powers are spirituality, success, healing powers, psychic powers, lust, protection, and love. Cinnamon oil was used as part of holy anointing oil by the ancient Hebrews. The leaves of the cinnamon tree were woven into wreaths which were used to decorate ancient Roman temples. The Egyptians used cinnamon oil during the mummification process. Magical uses for cinnamon when burned as an incense raises high spiritual vibrations aids in healing, it draws money, stimulates psychic powers, and produces protective vibrations. 
Cinnamon is also used in making sachets and infusions for these purposes. So there you have the cinnamon. I love that it's highly spiritual. It can raise the vibration. Um, I love that it can bring um, uh, like love and uh, prosperity and protection with it. And oh my gosh, it just smells really good. So the next thing is orange peels. I love, I don't even have to read orange because I just use orange in everything. I eat a lot of oranges for my health and I love the taste of them. But on top of that, I love that they bring, they are said to bring luck and prosperity and good fortune and protection and all of the, all, all of the above, really good stuff. And you know that orange and cinnamon smell really good together. And then we've got the um, Arabic gum. Arabic gum, let's see if it's in here. It is, the powers are spirituality and purification, yet again. Add to incense for good vibrations or smolder alone on charcoal. Purifies area of negativity and evil. So there you have that. That is, um, folk names for it is Arabic or Egyptian gum, Indian gum. Gender is masculine, and the planet is the sun, and the element is air. So, there you go. And then, the next one we had over here was myrrh. Myrrh, I'm sure most of you guys know, has been used, um, you know, in temples. Very commonly known with mixing it with frankincense in order to... Um, uh, bring power to anything that you're working. But here, let me read it to you. So the folk names are gum, myrrh, tree, karan, myrrh, balsam, odendron. The gender is feminine. The planet is the moon. The element is water. The deities are Isis, Adonis, Ra, and Marion. The powers are protection, exorcism, healing, and spirituality. Myrrh was burned to Ra at noon in ancient Egypt and was also fumed in the temples of Isis. You know I love that. I'm like, I love Isis. And Ra. So uh, magical uses, burned as an incense, myrrh purifies the area, lifts the vibration, and creates peace. However, it is rarely, rarely burned alone, usually in conjunction with frankincense or other resins. Myrrh increases the power of any incense to which it is added. Myrrh is also included in healing incenses and sachets, and its smoke is used to consecrate, purify, and bless objects such as amulets, talismans, charms, and magical tools. Myrrh also aids meditation and contemplation. It is often added to sachets, usually with frankincense. And then we get on to the frankincense. I'm going to read that one to you, which was right here. And oh my God, I love the smell of frankincense also. It just so, it's so good. Um, incense, name or folk names is incense. Olibans, Olibanum, Olibanus. Gender is masculine. The planet is the sun, element of fire. Deities are Ra and Baal. Powers of protection, exorcism, and spirituality, the ritual uses, the ancient Egyptians burned frankincense at sunrise to honor Ra. To this day, it is included in the composition of some of the incense used in Catholic churches. The magical uses are, when burned, frankincense releases powerful vibrations, which not only uplift those of the area, but also drive out all evil and negativity. Frankincense is therefore used in incenses of exorcism, protection, purification, and consecration. It is also burned to include, to induce visions and to aid in meditation, and it is added to sachets for luck, protection, and spiritual growth. Rosemary may be used as a substitute for frankincense if you don't have any. So, and the last one that I have not added yet, which I'm going to do that right quick. 
I should have put it in one of these as well, is some Blessed Thistle. Protection, Vitality, Fights Depression, uh, Purify, oh, Purification, Hex Breaking, Raises Thoughts, Sacred Protection from Evil and Negativity, and said to be a powerful cure for the plague. They used it. See, there we go. I'm not even going to... I'm going to measure it out. I'm just going to do what's right. Just what feels right. So, I, which I've already done that. I, I mean, I'm so meticulous with my stuff, you guys. I do all that even when I'm putting everything in my jars. I consecrate my jars. There's a whole process to what I do because I enjoy it, but also because... I like organization and I feel like I'm lifting things up the next level when I do that kind of stuff. So I've already pretty much put my intentions into each one of them. But as I mix this all around, that is what I am continuing to do is put my intention for consecration, for love. I always put rose in everything because it, it raises the vibration. It is a vibration of love. It comes from the heart center. So I believe that's where we need to, everything that we do, or at least this is my opinion, everything that I do and put into the world, I want there to also always be an underlining um, vibration of love because I want to do everything in the most loving manner that I can. So that's like my base. Oh my gosh, if you guys could smell how good this smells. So, um, protection and raising up um, the vibration, not allowing anything negative to attach to my items. And I make a large amount because this goes a long way, but it's not like it's going to go bad or anything. I'm not putting oils or anything like that into it, which you could at the time that you're burning it if you want to, but you really don't need to. So, I got these. I believe from the dollar store, believe it or not. Or I might have gotten a little bit smaller ones. I, I might have got these from the dollar store. And just put them in there. And, and voila. I will put labels on these. Oh my gosh, they smell so incredible. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I know I'm a nerd, guys. <laughs> I know I am. There is a method to my madness. Oop. And I'm making a mess. This new table, I showed the girls in our private chat, but this table, I actually made this. This was a picture that I had bought from Kirkland's a couple years ago, and it had been on my wall, and it was white, and I painted a little bit of blue into it, and like a light blue, and then our decor changed in the living room, and I put it away. And this is heavy. It's all wood. It's quite large. I think it's like like three and a half inches long or three and a half feet long, I mean. And so I stained it, polyurethaned it, put some legs on it, and now I got a friggin' table. And it's excellent. So I think I'm going to even these out just a little bit more. Or You know what? I think I'll probably just add a little bit more of my beautiful rose. There we go. And I can just mix it up. Look at that. All right. 
So meet me back here in just a second. All right. Make sure I'm recording. So there you have it, guys. Isn't that just wonderful? So I use charcoal discs. I'll keep them in one of these little jars that I get from the Dollar Tree, which I love. Dollar Tree, this is Arabic gum. Dollar Tree jar. This is um, frankincense is the like golden color and the dark chocolatey color is the myrrh. So I, another Dollar Tree jar. Dollar Tree jar, the cinnamon and various stages. Oranges, what I do with my oranges is I eat an orange every day, sometimes a couple oranges. Um, and then when I'm done eating them, I peel it. I chop up tiny little pieces of the chunks of the orange. And then I put it on my prosperity altar until it completely dries out. And then I use the um, uh, herb grinder in order to get it into this powdery. And oh my gosh, let me tell you, as soon as you open this up, all you smell is oranges. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna just burn just a little bit of orange by itself. Oh my goodness. But this smells so incredible. Look at that. And look at how much smoke for consecration that you can use. It's, I mean, it's coming right at you. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. Oh, and it smells so divine. So, use your resources like this. Make sure when you're burning herbs that the herbs that you're getting, because they sell herbs that you should not burn they can be poisonous if they're burned. So please do your research on that. Um, but other than that, you know, most of your resins are wonderful. Um, and the charcoal discs are extremely easy to purchase. They're cheap enough. And now next I'm going to be consecrating my book, but I'm, I've got a whole um, ceremony I'm going to do for that. But I just wanted to show you how simple it is to add another element to your craft. And it smells really good. And it's it just lifts up the atmosphere on everything in your room where you're doing it. Or you can do it outside. It doesn't matter. But you're raising the vibration. Um... I don't have to tell you. You guys know. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I am sending you love and light always. Thank you.